So how do you interview financial institutions? This is one of the biggest questions I'm getting in this space. People want to buy a business, but they're not sure how to go out there and use other people's money by interviewing financial institutions to get to a point where they want to work with you more than you want to work with them. This is what I'm going to talk about in this video. So stick with me until the end, because if you want to buy a business, you got to make sure that you're using OPM and know how to use OPM the right way. Now, if you don't know me yet, and this is the first video you watch, my name is Mohan Pober. I'm here to help you buy your dream business or a few of them like I've done in the last few years. And I'm here to share with you my journey in this space. I'm also the founder of acquisitions.com. So the first thing you must understand in this space is that you need to remember that those financial institutions, they need you just as much as you need them, right? If you want to buy a business, you want to use OPM, obviously, you want to use other people's money, you want to leverage yourself and grow faster. So you want to talk to financial institutions because you want to do larger deals and faster. You want those financial institutions. At the same time, you need to remember that they want you just as much. They want to work with you. That's the only way that they're making money. They're making money by loaning you money. And until you really internalize the fact that they need you even more than you need them, it's going to be really difficult for you to position yourself well when you talk to those institutions. And I see many people make a lot of mistakes, which I'm going to share with you a little bit more as well. But please remember, when you talk to those institutions, position yourself in a way that, and I'm going to share with you how, but you need to position yourself in a way that they need you just as much as you need them. The way to do it is to remember that you are valuable. I see people who treat financial institutions like, hey, if those guys will give me money, I pretty much won the lottery. I'm good. And when you go with that attitude, there's no way you'll get money from them because they'll see that you're desperate. They'll see that you're the, they're your only option. They'll be like, oh my God, this guy is so desperate. Why would I give him my money? I want someone with certainty, with confidence to work with. And unless you know how to position yourself and how to talk to them and what questions to ask, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. But in the end of the day, it all comes down to your attitude, to your positioning when you talk to them. And if you think that, hey, if I get those guys, I'm lucky, then you won't get it. But if you think, hey, I got thousands of other institutions, I got a Rolodex of those institutions, I can talk to all of them. And this conversation right now is just one of them. If they want me to work with me, cool. If they'll offer me good enough deal, I'll work with them. But if not, I have those other thousands of institutions I can work with, which is exactly why you want to have a list of thousands of them that you can talk to. Otherwise, if you think that you're only going to talk to one and if that one's going to close the deal for you, you're good. If not, you're done and you're going to give up, which I see a lot of people do. They're like, hey, I found this fun institution and if they give me money, sweet. I think I'm good in this space. I think I'm, I'm good at buying businesses. But if that institution is telling them no, they're like, oh shit, I'm, I'm probably really bad at this and I should give up. I should go and start in a Shopify business. What do you think? You, you, you think that you talking to one person will, will change your life? No, you got to come with the, with the attitude of you. Well, you need to come up with the attitude that's saying, hey, I'll talk to as many people as needed until I close that deal. That's why you need to talk to as many institutions as possible in the very different structures as well. That's why you need to know all the different institutions out there to talk to. If it's asset lenders, if it's cash flow lenders, if it's equity investors or financial partners that you can talk to, if it's merchant financing, if it's credit lines that you can get, if it's in the US, maybe you, you have SBA loans. If you know how to approach suppliers and customers, and if you know how to negotiate with the business owner, perhaps to give you a loan for a down payment if needed, those are just different structures that I'm showing my clients how to do, right? Unless you know all those different places. When I'm saying financial institutions, it's not just going to the big banks out there. It's going to everyone you can, all those different examples that I gave you and talk to each one of them as if they are another layer in your deal. There's not just big banks out there who can help you with financing your deal. There are tons of different options for you to find money as well. You need to understand that even your family, your mom, your brothers, your father, they can be great financial partners for you. And until you understand that bringing your closest people for you is you doing them a favor, it means that you just don't know how to look at your deal even. 
and you don't know what you have in your hands compared to what your family have to invest in. Because right now, when your family put their money in the bank, they, they're not getting any money back on that. They're not getting any returns. Heck, they even lose their money if you consider inflation, right? If you consider inflation, they're not getting any money. If you have a small business that you're about to buy and you know how to structure it well and how to negotiate it well, you'll be able to give them amazing returns. I'm talking 20 plus percent a year if you know how to buy the right business, right? And you know how to look at numbers the right way. So when I'm telling you go and interview financial institutions, it's less about the words that you're saying, it's about how you say in your words. It's about how much you know about your deal and what you have in, in your hands. Only when you know that, only when you know the full picture of what you have and what deal you have and what great opportunity you are giving to your family, then you'll be able to approach those financial institutions and interviewing them the right way. Because when we're saying interview financial institutions is to remind yourself that you are checking them to see if they are fit for you and not the other way around. You are checking them and asking them questions on what things they can offer you so they can be involved in your deals and not the other way around. And it's not about a specific script or specific question that you need to ask. Obviously there are questions you can ask and questions that you can go and ask them and figure it out what they can offer. But it's not about that. It's about your positioning and remembering who's doing who a favor here. And it's about understanding the language of each of those institutions, right? So if you're talking to an equity potential investor, do you know what's the IRR? Do you know what's their return are? If you're talking to asset lenders, do you know what's revolving facility is, for example, right? Or if you're loaning based on a real estate in a deal, there are different rules and lingo there that you need to learn and understand. Every institution you talk to, if it's assets, if it's equity, if it's cash flow financing, everyone will look at different things. Everyone will have their own terms that you should know and understand. And if you don't know those terms, you won't be able to position yourself as an expert which means that they won't take you as seriously as you want them to. So remember, it's less about specific words that you're saying. It's less about a script that you need to have. It's more about your commitment to learn the lingo in each of those institution level. It's more about you being resourceful and you having the full process behind you so you have a certainty when you talk to them. Because only when you have the full process A to Z and you understand all the lingo and all the process and you have a community of people around you who are doing those things on a regular basis, only then it will be normal for you to talk to institutions and show them that you are doing them a favor to talk to you and not the other way around. And unless you have those things around you, unless you have that community and full process with the nuances, with the lingo, with accountability and support of someone who can tell you, hey, dude, this is the way you should act versus how you did so far. Because the last thing you want to do is burn yourself in front of as many financial institutions as possible. And I see people make a lot of those mistakes. And trust me, after you fail with few of those institutions and you try to call them again, they won't take you seriously because you're now in their database. So from day one, you need to know how to position yourself. And like I said, it's more about the certainty that you have behind you because you learned the process, because you know everything you need to know now. And another big thing I'm getting from people is that they want to get seller financing as part of the deal. Yes, they want to interview financial institutions, but they understand that they can also use seller financing and have the seller part of being part of your deal as well. And they don't know how to get seller financing from a seller, how to convince him to finance part of the deal or all of it, right? which is exactly why I created the next video for you. But before that, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video. And after that, if you want to know how to get seller financing on a deal, go and watch this next video right now and I'll see you there in a bit.